I broke my multimeter. Because I'm an idiot, and I broke it in this video here. So now whenever I try and use it, it does this. Err. Err. Well, how are you going to fix a multimeter without a multimeter, I hear you ask? Well, somebody very kindly sent me this. And that somebody was Elias2k9. And Elias says, I says, I've watched you struggle on the repairs and I have to say I'm impressed. I used to be a repair service engineer for an audio video company in my early years and like you, I struggled. My biggest issue was never being able to get hold of a decent multimeter. I noticed a brand on your meter and thought I would do for you what someone did for me all those years ago. I went to a job on a farm to see about repairing a TV. The meter I had was a mapping gold with an old style dial. Touched something I should have left alone and blew it to bits. The farmer gave me a multimeter he had never opened or used because he didn't know how as payment for the repair. So I'm giving you a new and better meter that you can have to help in your electronic adventures. So thank you very much, Elias. That's very kind of you. And it's going to come in very handy, I expect. Let's just make sure it works. Multimeter. And continuity. Let's plug these leads in. Com input. Don't know what I'm going to test it with, but for now let's just see if it beats when we put, touch the leads together. It certainly does. Let's set it to ohms. And see what kind of a... Oh, wow, that's, that is low. Oh, 0 0.7. Okay, that's not too bad. So even if I can't get this working, I have a new and better one that I can use. I am quite fond of this one, and I would like to get it working. At least I have a backup either way. So I need to figure out how to open this thing up. I did have quite a few comments on the video where I, I broke it, uh, <laughs> saying that it's possible I've just blown a fuse because I was messing about with some switches with the power on that I probably shouldn't have been doing, which, uh, yeah, that kind of makes sense. So if it's just a fuse, then, I mean, it should be fairly straightforward, but I don't know if that is going to be the case. I also don't know how to get into it. Oh, okay, well, let's, let's give that a go. Didn't even know that, that was a thing. Well, this idiot broke his multi-meter All he gets is oil like he's on repeater Play with electrics, please kids You'll fry the DML and your pants will get skids Luckily this wasn't electrifying Sigma 4, we all good, no denying But it was only 5 volts That's in the stop exaggerating Steve Know what I mean? No sleep, man, maybe a coincidence Brian Mitchell had just broke, but in my defense I'll leave off some comments Web claw and I can't contend them Rest of sure. Dr. Prince's wizard, I accept the blame McLaughlin, my fault, I do exclaim. You a genius, I need continuity. Back, I'm a multimeter, freak or TV. I'm with the HHG, I'm a cheesy. Gary Ron, mysticism, B money. Alex Margaret J Fox Carter, David Climate Cad, and Sky Star Dreamer. Crazy Hall, Infinite, Terry Putter, Mackey. Mr. McKee, Danny King, Dan McKee. Chris Jenny, Finger Bird, Bad, Just Clutch, Powerless 11, I Paddle Cake, Bosh. Peace. Right, so it is fairly straightforward inside. And if, if I need to get to the dials, then I would remove that, but I'm going to guess that I don't have to. I'm going to have either blown some part of this circuitry here, or maybe just one of those fuses. First thing I'm going to do, though, is check the voltage. To, I did replace the batteries because I thought that might have been the problem. So we'll just see if we've got four and a half volts going to this board here. Multimeter two in, oh, it's, oh, it's got a magnet on it. <laughs> in voltage DC. Wow, that magnet's loud. Right, Dave, I need you. Thanks, Dave. Okay, let's see what voltage we have here and here. Five volts, yeah, so those batteries are completely full and it is getting the voltage. Right, let's change this to, it's very loud, uh. continuity. Uh, let's check this fuse. That fuse is okay. So if it's not this fuse, then, uh, boy, am I in trouble. Aha! <laughs> right, let's have a look at this fuse. Oh, it's not got anything written on it. How am I supposed to know what to replace it with? Or does it say it on the board? Let's zoom in. Right, it looks like it says F500 milliamp hours, 600 volts. Okay. 
I'm not going to have any of those, I doubt. I've got this box of fuses, but I don't know what they are. Right, so 0.5 amps, but it doesn't say the voltage, does it? How do I know what voltage they are? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, it's the right, it's a quick blow one. Let's try that. Oh. Oh. Wait, what? Ah, batteries have come out. <laughs> no, it still says error. Still says error. So have I blown that straight away? No. So the fuse is good, but I'm still getting the error message. Oh no. I mean, I'm saying the fuse is good. It, it's probably not 600 volts. I will order one that's 600 volts, but it's clearly still got continuity through it. So it should be working, right? I mean, I, let, shall I try a different one? I've also got this kit and this one does have the voltage on. They're all 250 volts. But at least I know it's 250 volts. So let's put 0.5 amps, 250 volts in one of these and see if it's any different. I don't think it's going to be. I think it's just going to be exactly the same. But it's worth a go. Let's just double check that one. Okay. Are you going to give me the same error? Yes, you are. Damn. So I've obviously blown something else. All right, I think we're gonna have to get this board out and we're gonna have to put it under the microscope and have a look around. So let's do that. What else have we got on here? Let's have a visual inspection, see if anything looks damaged. Oh look, Y1, it's our old friend. Uh, could it be one of those? I mean, they they look okay. They don't look damaged, do they? But I've had that before where they don't look damaged, but they are. And then what have we got here? We've got some diodes. Hmm. What is that? Nothing in particular. All right. Well, I'm not seeing anything that looks like it's exploded. Shall we check for shorts? Could it be a short, maybe? We're on continuity. No. Where, where else do we have capacitors? There's one over here somewhere. Yep. No. I'll just quickly go around and check them. No. I didn't think that would be the problem. Let's check these diodes. I mean, they're unlikely to be shorted, but we can check on diode mode if I can find it on this one. I mean, it might not work because it's in circuit, but let's check that. Are we getting a reading 1.17? Let's try it the other way. Oh well, okay, so that's probably okay. Let's try that one. Oh well. 0 0.6, right, so they're giving me different readings. Oh, 0 0.6. I definitely didn't get that the first time I tried it. 0 0.6, oh, 1.17 that way, and 0 0.6 that way. That's, oh, wait a minute. Right, it's the same, 1.17 that way, and 0 0.6 that way, okay. I mean, I don't know if that's right. 0 0.6 and 1.17 well they're all consistent 0 0.6 that's 1.7 not 1.17 and last but not least 0 0.6 and 1.7 why am I getting different readings on those two I mean they are in circuit so hmm I mean, what are these things here that are next to that fuse? 
what does it say? PTC. Right, that PTC thing is a thermistor, according to this. Temperature sensitive semiconductor resistor whose electrical resistance increases significantly as its temperature rises above a specific point known as the Curie temperature. Hmm. Right, well, let's test those on ohms. Ohms now. So that one, we're getting an ohms reading. It's 2k. Let's try this one. Also 2k. So in theory, if I heat them up, that resistance should increase, right? Let's try it. I'm not going to go crazy here. I'm only on 200 degrees. Let's try that. Sorry, you have to put up with the noise. Right, I'm not getting a good reading on that one at least. Try this one. Yeah, right, okay. So that one is dropping back down to, to 2000. I don't think I was on this one properly. Oh. Yeah, okay, that's doing the same. Right, I think they're working fine. I don't think it's that. Uh, I'm wondering whether it's these diodes. I feel like I should take at least one of these out of circuit. Let's take that one out because it, it was a bit crusty. And then we can test it out of circuit, see if it's acted like a diode. Right, let's test. Thank you. Right, let's test that. Altimeter on diode mode. Right, 0 0.5 that way. And swap the leads. Should get nothing. Should get OL. Which we do. Just double check that. I can't get on this blooming thing. Yeah, I'm on it. Yeah, okay. So that's absolutely fine. Damn, which way around was it? I think it was that way, right? Let's pop that back on before we lose it. Voice over Steve here. I very quickly put this back together just in case me messing around with that diode had made any difference. I don't know, I thought I'd get lucky or something. But as you can see by what's on the screen right now, it still says err. So then I flip it back around and I start looking at a couple of resistors that are near those diodes. And that's where we'll pick it up. I'm going from here, which is the, I don't know, input, I can't remember what it's called. And on these two resistors, you're getting continuity on that side, not on that one. On this one, again on that side, and that side. I mean, it might be a zero ohm resistor, but, uh, hmm. Well, let's check it on ohm. So this one wasn't getting continuity through, and that one is 100 ohms, is that? 100 ohms, so what's this one? Two, I mean, it might be a two ohm resistor, but I don't know, I need to take it apart again. Let's just skip to the bit where it's under the microscope. Job cut. Uh, I'm trying to use this colour band calculator thing, but but this resistor here has definitely got a black stripe on, and no matter what I do, whether I do four or five band, black isn't an option for either end of it. So how am I supposed to how am I supposed to know what that is? I mean I could be doing it wrong, more than likely am. Um so I'm just gonna pop this to one side and measure the resistance on it. I don't think that that's going to be a 2 ohm resistor. I mean, I could be completely wrong. It won't be the first time, and it won't be the last. Right, what have we got? 1.8 ohms. Is... <clears throat> I don't know! Right, I've just Googled it, and apparently that is a... I think it said it was a 1 ohm resistor, so I'm just going to put it back. That'll do. Good as new.
Right, what else could this be? Is it going to be the main chip? I mean, what's that chip there? What does that do? I wonder if it's got the same circuitry in the other one, the new one, and whether I could swap those chips out. I mean, they both look fine. They don't look like they've blown, but I might have done irreparable damage to them. Those Y1s I've quickly tested, and they, they seem fine. Uh, I don't really know what to do now. Voice over Steve again. So I decide to just put this thing back together. I actually hook it up to my bench power supply just in case it wasn't getting some clean voltage or something. I don't know. And then I just started to repeatedly turn it on and off again, as you do, to see what it would do. And well, this is what it did. Right, did you see that? I was just turning it off and on several times. I've got it powered up to my bench power supply and I've connected it to, well, four and a half volts. And now it, it seems to be working. Like I've reset something. I don't know how I've done that. Let's get it back together and see if like I've magically reset something by just messing about with it there. If I have, I don't know how I did it, and I'm not going to be able to help anybody. <laughs> Voice over Steve working overtime on this one. So we'll just very quickly go through me putting this back together. I did have some trouble with a couple of ball bearings that seem to have fallen out of the clicking dial on the front. I wasn't entirely sure where they went, but then I noticed a couple of springs. Uh, I think the first time I put it back together, it, I, I put them in the wrong place, so I had to take it apart again. Uh, I won't bore you with that. I'll just bore myself. Well, I'll bore my performing Steve with it. Well, he's already been bored by it, because I'm recording this later. Anyway, I'm going to stop now. See you in a bit. Mr. Sheen. Right, let's test that. Take these leads out of here. Put them back in here. Come on. Get in there. Let's check continuity. Yep. So we should have continuity on this fuse. But not on this one, because this is the one that blew. Yes. Right. So this is yet again another example of where I fixed this and I have no idea how. Because after replacing the fuse, it still wasn't working. I took off a diode, I took off a resistor, I poked around a bit, I turned it off and on several times, and now it's working. Yeah. I mean, it might fail again, but... Beep. I will get the proper fuse for it, um, but I think that one's going to be absolutely fine for now. Maybe. Very pleased to have my multimeter back. Although, I think we can probably all agree on this one that it is very, very stupid, and... Yeah, I broke it, it's my fault, but it's still very, very stupid. For how many corners do I have to turn? How many times do I have to learn? All the love I have is in my mind. Well, I'm a lucky man. With fire in my hand.